All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jonathan Raish. I'm the Planning and Development Services Director for the City of Kirkwood. Um, I want to welcome you tonight to our second public meeting, um, our final large format public meeting um, for the City of Kirkwood's Grants Trail Extension um, Conceptual Design Project. So um, I'm the project manager for the city on this, and uh, we have with us tonight our consultants from Horner and Schifrin, as well as Shockey Consulting. Um, so again, thank you everyone for coming, for your interest in the project. Uh, we look forward to um, sharing some additional information with you tonight and then getting more feedback. Um, and we'll let you know how to do that, but I'll hand it over to Paul Wojciechowski with Horner and Schifrin. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, thanks everybody for uh, attending this, uh, uh, this virtual, uh, open house again. And uh, I'm going to let Gabby talk about using Zoom. Uh, just like the last time, um, we're not going to allow any chatting. We're going to uh, chat, uh, input any questions in the Q&A box. And we'll, at the end of the session, we'll read those. Is that correct, Gabby? <laughs> That's right. Um, and if you don't know where the Q&A button is, it should be at the bottom of your screen. Um, close to where your mute and your video buttons would be if this were a regular meeting. And then during this presentation, we're going to be showing slides. And if you would like to use the view button, it's usually at the very top right corner of your screen. Um, it'll allow you to switch between seeing the speakers and seeing the presentation, um, give you a different view um, based on your preference. So that's all I've got. So there's, we've, we've got a couple things, uh, how you can provide your input. We have a new mapping tool. So just like the, on the, the first round, uh, we've updated the mapping tool with, with the alternatives on them. There's four alternatives you'll see. Um, and they, they'll match the same colors you'll see in the presentation tonight. And we're gonna have that, uh, that uh, mapping tool open till uh, November 30th. Uh, we also have a post-meeting survey that Gabby will send out our chat into the chat box. Uh, and uh, it'll allow you to make your comments on the alternatives that we present tonight. Uh, and there will be also be hard copies at City Hall. And actually, they're already at City Hall. So if you want to go by and, and fill out a hard copy of the survey, uh, it's at City Hall. And we're going to collect those until uh, November 30th also. Uh, like we mentioned before, type questions or comments into the question box. We're going to read and answer the questions live as time permits. Uh, and the summary of all the Q&A is going to be, can be sent to meeting participants. Uh, if you, uh, uh, you can uh, email uh, Jonathan if you need a hard copy, uh, and we can get those to you. So uh, the agenda for tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about the process again, show you where we are in the process. Uh, we'll provide a summary. Gabby's going to provide a summary of the engagement results to date. And we've got a lot of engagement on this on this project, which is it's amazing. And and Kirkwood, I expect Kirkwood to come out and and uh, engage. Uh, and you didn't disappoint me. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, we'll, I'll go through segments and alternatives, uh, just like I mentioned at the, at the last virtual open house. We developed segments based on your comments and meetings, and then we screened a couple items out, and then we put all those together to prepare alternatives. Now I'm going to talk a little bit of how we're evaluating the alternatives, and then you'll also be able to chime in on the alternatives that I'll show you tonight and walk through with you. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about next steps, and then we'll open it up to any questions you have. So uh, the planning process, uh, where we move to the next step. So we're uh, ref refining the alternatives, and we develop those alternatives. Uh, and then uh, with that, and with the evaluation criteria, it was all centered on grant applications. So the key things that are critical for, by way of vision and goals for this project are also things that are looked for when it comes to uh, getting funding for a project. So uh, we matched that up. Uh, 
Uh, we're going to continue uh, meetings with property owners after this virtual open house, which starts tomorrow. So I'll have office hours uh, tomorrow at 128 West Monroe. So I'll be there the, to talk to property owners, just like we did the last time. Uh, so we'll give you plenty of opportunities to chime in and um, you know, give, give us your comments. So uh, I'll, I'll let you take it, Gabby, because they're, they're going to get sick of me by the end of tonight. Sure. <laughs> Um, so like Paul said, we've had um, property owner mailings and meetings. We've had 29 so far, and we hope to have some more after the meeting for some uh, to talk about the alignments and anything that they are concerned or have comments on. We've also had over 600 responses on our community survey, which we thank Jonathan for. He um, was interviewed by KSDK, and that got a lot of um, exposure for the uh process and um, the survey itself. We've also had 49 comments on our mapping tool, um, which we are also really excited about. So uh, we had several engagement goals, right? Uh, help the community imagine the extension of Grants Trail into Kirkwood. Uh, communicate the connection of the, this project into existing plans. Identify concerns and opportunities. And then build community consensus on a preferred alternative. So all this in a fairly short amount of time uh, from, from a planning process standpoint. And we also had um, a really good mix of residents. So almost 96% of the people who took the survey visited Grants Trail and 79% have visited in the last six months. So they're very familiar with what's going on um, with the trail and how it's used currently. We are also excited that since Grants Trail is a regional trail, we had a good mix of residents and non-residents who took the survey and 65% of the respondents reported they live in Kirkwood and 35% lived outside. Um, we also saw that gender and age of respondents were similar to the census for Kirkwood and race of respondents, um, people are more likely to be white and less likely to be African-American uh, compared to the census numbers for Kirkwood, Kirkwood from last year. So we asked a couple questions um, about the trail and we saw that the top uses identified were cycling, walking and running um, for the what people would like to use the extension for and our top destinations for the ex for the possible extension is the um, downtown Kirkwood area and the farmers market. Um, amenities were highly desired. Um, so we um, only took the um, top five or so here, basically if they had 10 or more um, responses, we or 10 or more um, uh, percent, we wanted to see that here. So if you wanna go to the next one. Um, we also, people were really interested in seeing restrooms, trash cans, benches, and drinking fountains. Um, we had a bunch of choices and a bunch of things mentioned by um, respondents as amenities they would like to see, but here we only showed you the um, answers that were more than 50%. So um, over 50% of the people uh, said that they wanted these. And we also saw some safety concerns um, and some interactions with motor vehicles um, and crossings at railroad tracks. Those were our uh, top safety concerns. Um, but it was interesting that about a fourth of the people who took the survey said they didn't have any safety concerns whatsoever. Um, for our vision, um, a significant majority said that our vision for the project was on the right track. Um, we did actually have a lot of comments regarding safety and we, um, we had the suggestion for the word safe to be added to the vision statement. And most goals um, were similar to, or they, they had similar levels of support. And two goals, which were are at the very bottom of this screen, um, they had, a little bit less support than others, which they were encourage economic development and provide facilities that encourage trail uses, usage by users from around the region. But other than that, um, we saw some good support for our goals. Lastly, these are some sample comments from our survey. Um, trying to bring in, you know, a, a variety of opinions and anything like that. We wanted to show um, what people were saying 
Um, so people were again talking about safety. We had um, concerns about homes, um, but basically people were very excited to have a Grants Trail extension um, coming into Kirkwood. Okay, at, uh, at the property owner meetings, and uh, I'll take that, Gabby, because I attended all those 29 uh, property owner meetings, either in person uh, or by Zoom. So we offered two options, whatever people prefer. And it was really cool because a lot of people, I may, I had a couple people come to the office and, and, uh, and wearing our masks, we joined in in a conversation around the table. So we had more than one property owner uh, kind of sitting around and discussing, um, you know, issues, concerns, uh, challenges, things like that. So uh, we had great discussions, got a lot of really good information, additional information uh, that we didn't know about from people that live along the alignments. Uh, we confirmed a lot of our alignment ideas. Um, we also got a lot of new, new ideas for alignments and alternatives. Uh, we clarified the process and, uh, and we kind of gathered that there was significant public support for the project from most people that we talk, everybody that we talked to. So, uh, you know, the map tool, uh, we, we kind of did a, a word cloud and this is a, a word cloud that we got out of it. So keywords that were used quite a bit in, in the comments that we got off the map tool. So of course, bikes, trails, uh, traffic were, were the key items. Uh, uh, but it's just interesting to see how many some how many times things got mentioned. So uh, the map tool, we had 21 total respondents, uh, and they did 49 comments. So of course, some people had more than one comment. Uh, some people had many, uh, but it was really good information. And we've got the similar setup that we did the last time in the map tool that you'll see uh, if you lo log on to the city website and, and click the link uh, tomorrow. Um, this is kind of the spread. So the green, uh, the green pins are, are opportunities, the reds are challenges, and, uh, and the yellow uh, are just comments. Uh, so, uh, as far as visions and goals, um, we added safe. So the updated project vision, and again, we just provided one, one additional word here is the Graboy Greenway slash grants trail extension to historic downtown Kirkwood provides safe bike and pedestrian connections to the community destinations, neighborhoods, schools, and businesses for people of all ages and abilities to increase recreational activity, encourage economic development opportunities and enhance the vibrancy of downtown. So uh, uh, the goals, those were pretty, uh, people uh, pretty much were encouraged, were encouraged, but that uh, we, there was a lot of support for each of the goals. Of course, not all of them weight equally, but connectivity is really important. Safety and comfort, of course, viable walking and, uh, and biking opportunities, encourage trail usage. Um, maintain a low, uh, low maintenance. So we got to consider maintenance, uh, accommodation of future connections, and then trail oriented de development or economic development. Uh, each of these goals actually funnels into evaluation criteria that we use for evaluating the segments and we're using to evaluate uh, the alternatives that we've crafted. So from all these goals flow the evaluation criteria. So the alignments. So this is the study area that we started with. And as I mentioned before, we looked at it in, in four segments. And from the, from in each of those segments, we developed uh, possible segments for alignments. Uh, so don't let this scare you. It's, it scared me a little bit too, but there's a lot of choices in each of these sections um, uh, of the project uh, length. Uh, based on these initial uh, initial comments and meetings with property owners and others and seeing the map tool, we actually screened out uh, a few of these options. 
uh, based on com comments and then early evaluation. Uh, uh, one key item that kind of came off the, off the table was the Holmes route up to Argonne. Uh, uh, it just, uh, there was a lot of comments about that and, and there's a lot of issues with that when it came, comes to evaluating it versus evaluation criteria. We also uh, looked at, you know, the, the north and south sides of Clinton, um, east of Luffingwell, and the north side of Clinton uh, kind of came off the table. Uh, also, uh, up in the section five, which is between uh, west of Taylor to the train, train station, um, we had an alignment that's along the, the north side of the railroad, uh, and then we had uh, a couple along Argonne and the Argonne uh, alternatives up there kind of came off the table too because there's just a lack of room up that way. So based on those segments, we developed four alternatives from those segments uh, based on the evaluation criteria that we used that was developed from the, from the, um, from the goals. And I'll kind of go into all the details of, of the evaluation criteria, uh, but not just one thing would really uh, uh, impact uh, a, a rating of a, of a segment or an alternative. It's, it's a combination of a lot of things that go into it. Uh, so that's, that's how we set it up. So one thing wouldn't just do something in. So it was a combination of things that make, made, makes an alignment or a segment really worthwhile. So now I'm gonna kind of work, walk you through uh, each of these alignments. So uh, alternative one, uh, and I'm not sure, I tried to call these something, but I decided not to call it something. Uh, it's really the rail corridor though. Uh, uh, so coming out of the Kirkwood Trailhead, Uh, coming out of the Kirkwood Trailhead, we go into um, uh, the old, uh, an abandoned railroad alignment that's per been purchased by an adjacent property owner uh, with a grade separated bridge over the Burlington Northern Railroad. Uh, and then it runs along um, the not being used rail corridor. Uh, uh, and then it, uh, it travels all the way to uh, Leffingwell. And the blue um, kind of rectangle there is a possible grade separation uh, over Leffingwell for the trail. Uh, then it continues along the south side of the rail alignment, um, the active rail corridor, and that's where the spur kind of hits. Uh, and then we travel along the south side of the railroad corridor, uh, either on or off uh, railroad right away. Uh, and then we grade separate at Fillmore and then travel along the south side of the active rail corridor across the um, Kirkwood Electric property to get to Taylor. And then we cross Taylor uh, to get to the farmer's market. Um, that blue box uh, on Taylor is something we put on there, which we call the long-term future alignment um, for future roadway and trail gate grade separation. Uh, the consideration on this alternative and other alternatives is just to leave that crossing ad grade, but it is a potential future project uh, that we would look at to grade separate uh, the roadway and the trail. All and that, the, they're all labeled to some extent. All the grade separations are still being being reviewed at this time, right? As as in potential for phasing in, I think just because of cost. So that all, I don't want people to think that uh, you know, if alignment one was the preferred route that we pursue, that we might not be pursuing all those grade separations from from the all at one time. Right? Correct. There might, there might be some alternative options that we need to look at. Um, to make it a viable project um, from grant funding or other cost elements as well. 
Correct. So, so all these alternatives, we try to create the best alternative, but they, there is phasing involved uh, of, you know, great separations. Uh, and there's other choices that we can make um, during the preliminary engineering process that could take another uh, connection that's not a great separation to make the connection uh, based on cost. But what we didn't want to lose is that ultimate vision that we had uh, for the overall uh, alignment. So some, op some opportunities for alignment one, a uh, direct connection to downtown uh, to the most highly used trail in the region. Uh, with grade separations shown, there's no at grade street crossings or driveway crossings. So that's a benefit to this. Uh, a low number of properties secure. Uh, there are just a, a limited number of property owners uh, that we would work with on this. Uh, a high ability for emissions reductions and conservation opportunities along this alignment. Uh, utilizes the most desirable alignment based on public input. Uh, it's compatible with existing and future businesses. Uh, we can definitely secure existing businesses along this rail alignment. It'd be very easy to do that. Um, we have an ability to improve railroad right away for current safety standards. And there's a high use of public property uh, at the downtown entry. Some challenges, it's definitely a high cost option uh, uh, with and, and limited opportunities for funding except as phases. So that's where uh, Jonathan alluded to a lot of great separations kind of increase project costs. Uh, so we may have to phase those grade separations in as funding and opportunities exist. There's limited connectivity to population density. It's, it's right along that rail corridor. So there's no adjacent uh, 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 residential properties that could get right to the trail really easy. Uh, it's, got a, it's going to take significant coordination with the railroads. There's two of them. There's Burlington Northern and Union Pacific uh, that's required for permeating and right-of-way purchases. There's a high number of bridges, high ongoing maintenance costs. So that's an ongoing maintenance cost that we have to be concerned about. It's got significant utility relocation costs for the overcrossing at the BNSF. So there's a transmission line down there that would likely have to be raised for that great separation over the Burlington Northern Railroad. Uh, and overall, you know, right-of-way costs aren't gonna be cheap. So alternative two is another alignment that uh, comes out of the Kirkwood Trailhead. Uh, it, it travels north on Holmes, on the west side of Holmes to Elliott, uh, runs down Elliott, and then gets on to the abandoned rail or the, the not being used rail, it's not abandoned yet, it's not being used rail corridor <laughs> to get to Leffingwell. Uh, crosses Leffingwell at grade uh, and then travels north along the west side of Leffingwell, crosses the rail railroad at grade uh, to get to Scott, travels on the south side of Scott, crosses Fillmore and then travels north on Fillmore to Madison, travels on the south side of Madison uh, to connect to the farmer's market and it crosses Taylor at grade. So some opportunities of alignment two, um, it's got a high connection to population density. It's on the south side of a neighborhood. Uh, it's got the lowest project costs since there's all at grade crossings. Uh, it's got a direct connection from trailhead to downtown, so it's not veering off a whole lot. So it's fairly direct. Uh, there's no structures needed, only retaining walls. Uh, it's a high use of public right-of-way. So along street alignments, uh, along Scott is using public right-of-way. And then that connection to the downtown. So it's half right-of-way, half public right-of-way. Some of the constraints we have is there's two at-grade rail crossings are necessary for the alternative. Uh, the route has the most limited space of any option uh, to use for best practice and open space opportunities. So there's not a whole lot of room for that once you get past uh, Luffingwell. Uh, there's a high number of street and driveway crossings. Um, 
It's a moderate stress route since it's adjacent to the street for all for half the route. Uh, the user experience is not really consistent with the rest of the um, Grabway Greenway or the Grants Trail. So alternative three is another option, uh, a distinct option as far as coming from the Kirkwood Trailhead. Uh, this this option uh, uh, it, uh, travels out of the Kirkwood Trailhead uh, to the southwest uh, a few hundred feet, and then travels along. Uh, right there's a billboard right there, and um, and it travels to cross the Burlington Northern Railroad with an undercrossing. Now there's a uh, there's a uh, a culvert under the railroad there, uh, and that is a, a location where we would we would propose to cross under 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 the railroad to get to the um, rail corridor, the old spur line corridor. I keep calling it a rail corridor. It's a spur corridor, uh, and then travels up this the the railroad, railroad spur. Part of it's been abandoned, and part of it still owned by the railroad that we would have to purchase. Uh, we get to Leffingwell and we cross Leffingwell at grade uh, to um, go uh, just north of uh, an office business there and just south of a um, um, uh, uh, group of businesses there. And it weaves through the woods and by the creek, there's a creek back there. So it doesn't quite get to the creek and it turns north uh, to just west of the Euro box uh, and the, uh, the beverage company building and uh, sneaks through towards the rail corridor again and then just to the south of the uh, uh, the tower location crossing Fillmore uh, to the on the south side of uh, um, south side of Mon Monroe to get to Taylor and then north on Taylor to the farmers market. Here's a few shots along this corridor. So some uh, opportunities with this alignment, is there significant space for uh, designing to best practice? Uh, the cost is moderate compared to the other routes. I wouldn't say it's cheap or, or expensive, it's kind of moderate. Uh, it's a direct connection to the performing arts in downtown area. Um, it is significant space for conservation and supports emissions reduction. Uh, it's compatible with existing and future businesses since we can secure those uh, in development of the, of the trail through this location. Minimizes rail crossings. Um, and there's pretty much a low level stress uh, at, at, except at the intersections, the, the at grade crossing there at Leffingwell uh, and the at grade crossing at, at, um, at Fillmore. Uh, but in general, it's got a low level stress for that overall route. Some of the constraints we have is high rate of right, right away costs for private property owners and railroad. Uh, uh, permitting of an undercrossing of, of Burlington Northern is it, gonna be a challenge. Um, the street crossings at grade, uh, there's a large amount of private property needed. Uh, the railroad under that, uh, uh, the undercrossing at Burlington Northern could be underwater during rain events. So that's something that we have to consider. And it, it requires more tree removals than most of the other options. So uh, alternative four is another alignment that runs along Leffingwell in general. I'm gonna, so you can see the pictures along this alignment which I didn't do on the last, the last alignment. <laughs> so this will give you a good picture of things. So uh, coming out of the trailhead, we'll travel on Leffingwell uh, and through um, that undercrossing of the Burlington Northern Railroad. Uh, traveling, continuing on Leffingwell and that undercrossing of Leffingwell, as far as the, uh, uh, the evaluation of this alternative goes, we were assuming adding another uh, undercrossing under the Burlington Northern Railroad. There's certainly another option that would be less expensive, uh, which would be to um, use one of the sides for the, for the trail and then signalize the other side for uh, vehicular traffic. Uh, that's a more challenging option too. Um, but we would continue on the south side of, of Luffingwell which has minimal driveway crossings, 
once we get under the Burlington Northern, there's a few crossings there, but until then, we don't have any at grade crossings. We are next to a creek, though, that has a challenge in and of itself. Uh, we, we continue to um, uh, Clinton. We travel west on Clinton uh, through Fillmore Park, most likely along the roadways, because we can actually match grades there. Uh, uh, and then travel north on Fillmore, uh, probably uh, cross at the existing rapid flashing beacon at, at, uh, at the top of the hill there uh, to get to the west side. And then travel through the Kirkwood Maintenance Facility and to the west side of the Performing Arts Center to get to Taylor. And then north on Taylor on the east side. So there's a lot of opportunities with this one. We're using uh, an existing bikeway connection, uh, but um, provi it provides separation. So we're separating um, the trail from traffic. So it's not an on-street route anymore. Um, we'll utilize I-44 I right away and city right away for a lot, um, a large amount of the, the corridor. Uh, provide side path next to an existing creek, which could be a really neat opportunity uh, along that creek area. It connects directly to Fillmore Park. It uses, utilizes the city maintenance property and the Performing Arts Center for the connection to downtown. Uh, the segment along Fillmore is along a walking route for Nifer Middle School. Uh, it minimizes rail crossings and it has a, a potential for connection to the Merrimack uh, Greenway along I-44. So some constraints for this uh, alignment is the base option. Um, without a new undercrossing of Burlington Northern requires a signalized one-way vehicle or traffic on Leffingwell. So whether we do a undercrossing or we use a signalized one-way vehicular crossing, both will be challenges. Uh, it's the most indirect of all routes to downtown. The level of stress is moderate since it is along a roadway. It will have separation of at least five feet uh, uh, with the guidelines we're using for a side path, but it's still along a roadway. Um, there's a minimal ability to secure private property since it is along a roadway. Uh, and then the trail parallel to the creek will, will be located uh, uh, along Leffingwell ne next to the creek there, uh, is located along a floodplain and a floodway. So we have to deal with those issues with this project for this uh, alternative. So I just wanna kind of go into a little bit of the evaluation criteria that we've developed for this uh, based on those goals and objectives. So we've got the evaluation criteria kind of categorized in four main areas. So feasibility, uh, connectivity, impacts, and then safety and comfort. So I'm just gonna briefly go through the overarching elements of each of these. So there's several subcategories of each of these high level criteria. So under feasibility, there's space availability that we're, we, we're considering. We're considering the crossings of all types, both roadway and intersections, rail crossings, as well as driveway crossings. Uh, we're gonna consider um, the structures that, that are gonna be involved in each of these alternatives, the utility adjustments that would be required, operational issues. So once we build uh, one of the options, you have to take care of it. So we're considering those issues, uh, physical constraints in, in overall construction of the alternative, uh, the ability to meet overall guidelines for best practice, uh, which includes NACTO, traffic calming guidance, Vision Zero, and then using Great Rivers Greenway um, design guidance. Uh, and then overall, uh, so, and then uh, in time and process involved, the ownership, uh, property acquisition needed, uh, railroad coordination that's gonna be required for the option, um, the time it's gonna take for alignment development, permitting and overall implementation, so constructability, uh, and then we're gonna look on co at cost and affordability, uh, which include construction costs, uh, funding opportunities for an alternative. Um, and then we come up with, uh, so there's different subcategories there. 
Under connectivity, we look at uh, mobility options and networks, and we looked at destinations that we're gonna connect to. So mobility options, um, you know, bike and ped network connectivity and mobility that a certain al alternative kind of gives us, uh, the population density it serves. Uh, and then we also look at the business businesses connected, um, the commuting abilities, so directness of route, so the most direct uh, can allow uh, better connectivity for commuters. Uh, open space connectivity, uh, connectivity to Fillmore Park and the YMCA, uh, connections to institutions such as the Performing Arts Center or the library, uh, city attractions uh, like Station Plaza, Magic House, uh, schools and educational resources. So uh, if it connects to a route that's uh, that's a walking route to a school, uh, that's what we're considering there. So under impact, we have environmental uh, criteria and we have development and security criteria. So and po potential emissions reductions and heat island effect reductions. We looked at tree removals required for an alternative. Uh, biodiversity, uh, productive landscapes and habitat opportunities. Uh, if there's any contaminated or hazardous waste site remediation needed, uh, we looked at uh, ability to provide stormwater best practices. Is there room for that? Uh, and then under development and security, is it adjacent to, uh, to existing and or planned commercial developments and investment? Uh, is it adjacent to planned residential developments or investment? Uh, is there an ability to address security for residents and private enterprises? So can we secure private properties along the trail um, in, in a way that meets the needs of those adjacent property owners? Uh, and then the ability to meet SEPTED, which is crime prevention through environmental design. So can we make the, the alignment secure uh, for physical, with physical improvements? And then uh, ultimately the, the safety and comfort kind of yields level of stress. So the level of stress at street crossings, uh, the number of rail crossings is important. The level of stress on an alignment overall, uh, the ability to address ne negative interactions between cars and active transportation in the study area that we heard a lot about. Uh, and then overall user experience, that is keeping um, the alternative consistent with what people would expect of um, the Gravoy Greenway Grants Trail. So we've got some next steps that we're going to work through here. Uh, we're going to following input from uh, people that are attending this meeting, as well as uh, from survey responses and the map tool. We're going to begin to develop that final preferred alternative, and then uh, an alternative a concept plan that includes a more detailed uh, cost estimate and impact assessment. Uh, we're gonna look at phasing, You know what it's gonna take to phase things based on um, opportunities for funding that we have coming up. Uh, and then we'll begin development of a, um, a funding application uh, for uh, February. Uh, we will be meeting with city officials to talk about the alignments and make sure. So what it's really going to be critical for your input on this, because we really want to have, have uh, the public and we need to have consensus on the preferred alignment. Uh, and the elected officials and staff are going to want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, Paul. The one key piece of this is that it will be presented, you know, prior to actually making application. We do have to get the city council as the elected officials get their support um, uh, for for what they want us or if they want us to pursue specific funding. Uh, we've <clears throat> up until now, we've assumed we would be doing that in February. And that's what we'll be requesting uh, once we have all the feedback to synthesize with a, a recommendation. Um, but obviously that does is subject to review by the city council. It, these types of applications do take city commitment in terms of local match in most cases and maintenance, ongoing maintenance. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of considerations to be made by the elected officials as well. 
And, uh, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jonathan, I just want to be clear that there's no done deals, even with a preferred alternative that we come up with, because we have a lot of people that have to interact with this project, meaning property owners, the railroad, uh, there's a lot of constraints that we have to look at when we start getting into a detailed conceptual plan and estimating this, uh, as well as working through, if we're successful with funding, working through uh, an uh, design that may uh, require, uh, you know, if it puts up a roadblock to one segment that we're looking for, we may have to go uh, uh, have a fallback option to go on, on a different alignment to make the connection. So there's a lot of moving parts and a lot. And so nothing's a done deal, even when we come up with a preferred alternative. Yep, so I want right. to be clear with that. And, and when it comes to, you know, property that's not owned by the city, it's all about, uh, you know, partners, uh, on the on the private side and working with the railroad on the rail corridor that they're not using as well as their active rail line. So, uh, so and that that brings me to railroad and property owner coordination. <laughs> uh, so we have to engage adjacent property owners and the railroads, uh, both of them. So Burlington Northern as well as Union Pacific. We have two of them on this project. We have to identify specific needs and requirements for that preferred alternative. Uh, and then we have to gain agreement on what property owners and the railroad be willing would be willing to do to work together along their right of way. Uh, what type of design details we're going to need to create that win-win. So there's a lot of give and take and a lot of things that we still have to address. Uh, uh, and then we have to determine alternative alignments as backup plans in case we run into uh, a roadblock uh, in one, one segment of an alternative. And finally, so, uh, so the goal is to develop a final concept plan and phasing and estimates. So we're gonna refine a preferred alternative uh, for our conceptual plan. We'll prepare a final conceptual plan estimate. Uh, we'll look at the phasing that's needed. So whichever option that comes out as a preferred alignment, uh, if one has a lot more bridges than the other, those bridges cost a lot of money. And chances are we may have to phase those grade separations and those bridges uh, as future phases of the project at some point. Uh, and then we're going to prepare, prepare that detailed cost estimate for the preferred uh, plan and develop a funding application and look for additional funding opportunities for a preferred alignment. So the schedule that we're looking at, uh, we're here in the middle of November with uh, the second uh, public open house. Uh, we're looking at additional engagement of property owners over the next couple of weeks. Uh, we'll be looking, uh, we'll be working with the influencer group again and present uh, results of this, uh, your feedback that you provide us and results of the uh, alternative analysis that we put together based on the criteria I just went over. Um, we'll be working through December um, to finalize that conceptual uh, plan and estimates and prepare that funding application for a February, late February deadline. So we're open for any questions you have. And just as we, uh, we did the last time, we'll read off your questions and Jonathan will field the questions and ask for my help if he needs it <laughs> to answer the question. <clears throat> Great. Thank, thanks, Paul. Appreciate that presentation. Um, so as a, as a reminder, there should be, um, you should have an option at the bottom of your screen that says Q&A. Uh, we do have uh, three submitted right now, so we'll start uh, answering these as they, come, as they come in. But if you have other questions and you haven't submitted one yet, please feel free to do so. Um, so the first question we received was, um, number alternative one is clearly the best, just more expensive. Can't we get any of this new infrastructure money? Um, 
also number four is altogether too hilly. So these are great comments. Um, encourage you to, uh, we'll provide the link for the survey. It is on our city's website for making pedestrian safety a priority. There's a link to the um, online survey as well as the online mapping tool. So we appreciate the, the, the comments, but I encourage you to submit those through those means as well. Now for the question itself, uh, the new infrastructure money. So yeah, I think um, what Paul mentioned towards the end of we're preparing um, a specific grant application for federal funds this February, that's a reoccurring cycle. Um, and the other piece of that is that there's identifying additional funding opportunities, right? So that is part of Horn and Schifrin's task. Um, I think the new infrastructure money, um, I believe I heard the bill was just passed yet or signed yesterday. So nobody knows the details of that. So uh, we don't know if we can get any of the new infrastructure money. It, would, it sure would be nice, uh, but we will certainly be looking, um, keeping an eye on all those options as we go forward um, with the project. So. Uh, I think Gabby just put into the chat box, which you should all see, um, there's a link to the alignment survey there directly. And then um, I will add here in a little bit the link to the city's page if, if Gabby uh, doesn't beat me to it. So moving on, um, oh, thanks for the reminder. So the mapping tool and the survey questionnaire, as Paul mentioned, are be available until November 30th. Um, and then if you do need a paper copy of the survey, just feel free to email me. Uh, my contact information is there on the screen to, to coordinate that. So, and there's the city page, making pedestrian safety a priority where the survey and mapping tool are both available. Okay, so next question, um, any chance to work with BNSF to convince them to update the underpass at Leffingwell to include a bike pad tunnel? It is very old, leaks water from above and is very narrow when trying to accommodate large trucks and buses using the warehouse space to the west of the underpass. Um, yes, so um, coordination, uh, we didn't tend to have as many conversations uh, with the railroads as, as they'll let us have um, and ongoing um, as needed, uh, but that is certainly, I think Paul mentioned that as one of the options, right? Adding an additional tunnel. Um, and we just wanna make sure that we have a fallback if that's not possible or they're um, not willing to, to partner with that. So Paul, do you have something to add? Well, and, and with if with a lot of these alternatives here, there's always more than one choice of achieving a goal. <laughs> so, uh, you know, boring a new uh, on a crossing for the trail uh, mm -hmm. is one option. Uh, replacing that underpass in total is another option. Uh, keeping the rail uh, running is a mandatory, most likely. So, uh, so as just like anything else, there's all, always multiple options that that are up for consideration, uh, and we have to estimate those and cost those out. So, all right. The next question, Paul, you might need to handle this one. Um, it says reduced emissions were mentioned under opportunities. I, I don't know if it was what, which alignment, but please explain how emissions are impacted. If you can go into a little more detail on that, Paul. Yeah, yeah. So, so a lot of trails, uh, a, a lot of trail opportunities and and uh, applications. And I'm not so. I'm not saying uh, we're going after CMAC funding or anything like that. Congestion mitigation, air quality, but mode shift that a trail connection would provide. Uh, we just wanted to capture any potential emissions reductions that uh, connect uh, that extension of the Grants Trail to downtown could offer as far as mode shift uh, to make that uh, connection to downtown. Also to kind of reduce the parking impacts on downtown Kirkwood by people biking to downtown versus driving to downtown. Uh, so that's what I'm, that's what we mean by emissions reductions. And uh, when I read that, uh, that statement, uh, I knew I was going to get a question on that. So right now it's, it's quantitative, but we need to make that qualitative and it can't and opposite of that right shift. yeah it's more yeah it's qualitative right now it's a general statement right now but the data yeah we need to get the data to make it quantitative to dig into that further right 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 all right the next one is did you say that the charts will be posted tomorrow um if you're talking about the presentation um 
we will get uh, the presentation is being recorded. Um, so we'll get the recording of that as well as a link to the presentation up. Um, we will try to get that up on our website as soon as possible, um, hopefully by tomorrow, yes. Jonathan, if not tomorrow, it should be up by the end of the week, I would say. Okay, great. Oh, that's right, there is some, yeah, there is some processing I remember Gabby mentioning about the recording and, and that that needs to happen. So, uh, but yes, we'll get them up um, by the end of this week, if nothing else, uh, copies of the, of the slides and presentation. Thanks, Gabby. Uh, let's see. And the next uh, the next comment was on the map tool. And right. yeah, after after the last open house, uh, the virtual public meeting, we had the map tool open for a week or two afterwards. Then we shut it down. So, you know, you couldn't access it. <laughs> so there was a reason why you couldn't access it. Uh, we reopened that with the alignments on it. So instead of just that blank box on there, uh, we, you've actually got the alignments to look at and make comments on. So uh I, I've just checked it, so I, it should be live again. So if you go to that, uh, the link that's going to be on the city website tomorrow morning, or it may be there already. It's, it's there now. Yeah, and I okay. and I checked it right before the meeting, so it 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 should be functioning. I did. Uh, okay. It's working, I think. Yep. Okay. So yeah. So it's open again. So you should, if you have any problems, let Jonathan know. Yep. <laughs> right. Yeah. We'll we'll take care of it. But yes, it was it was down intentionally in between. Um, phases of this and it, it was back up probably as of about an hour ago. So uh, next one is, is this grant going to be submitted as a raise grant to Federal Department of Transportation or East Coast Gateway for STP, TAP, CMAC uh, grant application? Will GRG be funding partner for the 20% match? Uh, so right now the intention um, the STP and CMAT, or so surface transportation um, program and congestion mitigation air quality program through East West Gateway. Um, that process is opening, I guess just opened and we had a training on it earlier today with them. So the intention at this point is to recommend to the city council that we would pursue um, an STP grant through East West Gateway. It's the largest pool of funding currently available for these types of projects um, amongst other types of projects as well. It's one type of eligible, but so the intent is to recommend to the city council at this point um, in the near future, but with that February deadline to apply for STP in this round. Um, uh, but again, that will be up to um, the city council to provide staff that direction. Uh, and the question about funding partner with GRG. So we've um, obviously we don't have control over that. We're happy to get any other local partners that we can, and we're having those conversations. Um, we'll continue to have those conversations, but, um, uh, you know, they have their own funding stream and regional focus. So they've got, um, a lot of needs throughout the region, but we are certainly having those conversations. We'll continue to do so as we prepare, um, this year's application and any in the future. Um, the next one, since it would connect to Gateway Greenway, wouldn't Kirk would be eligible for maintenance partnership with funds from them to, um, so I, I believe it's probably Great Rivers Greenway um, and the current Gravelway um, Greenway Grants Trail. Uh, so those are also ongoing conversations. So it's not, a, not an automatic that just because we link up to it and call it the Gravelway or Grants Trail extension doesn't mean that um, GRG or anyone else involved in the rest of it would automatically jump on board, but those are, we've been having, um, we've included those groups in discussion so far to make sure they understand what we're doing and where we're coming from, and we'll continue to have those conversations to see what partnership opportunities we have. Um, obviously, I feel like it is a regional project, we'll have regional importance um, and we'll continue to try to work with other partners as much as possible. Um, next question is, what is the traffic on Leffingwell at the underpass? Uh, that's a good question that I don't have any. Paul, did we, was that anything we provided to you? We do have a map that shows the traffic volumes uh, and I'm trying to pull that up. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, I, well, I, I do have an answer to that question. Well, I just don't have it at my fingertips. That's all right. While you look that up, I'll, I'll keep <laughs> going. And we'll just let me know when you've got it. So we'll get back to that one. The next one, um, alternative route three, what private business properties are affected? Um, so um, let me see if... Um, let's see if I can and get back to the alternative route. And I think the, a question like this, unfortunately, if you are a property owner and you have specific concerns, um, I think it's probably best to contact, um, contact either me or, or Paul for one of the um, open office hours to talk about the specific concern. Um, I don't know that the alternative maps right now had every parcel indicated on them. Um, trying to go back to that as the well. The map, the the maps don't, but we do have property ownership maps that's laid onto the the profiles that we have for each all these alternatives. Right. Uh, that we do do see where the property lines are. Right. So on alternative three, the majority. Um, the alignment shows that it goes along the spur railroad right away um, until Leffingwell and then crosses Leffingwell and it would potentially um, need to have coordination and partnership with property owners um, that are between um, Leffingwell and Taylor um, to the north side of that block um, crossing across Santee and uh, I think Paul mentioned going towards the, the beverage uh, company uh, warehouse building um, just south of the tracks. So uh, if you do have specific questions, the maps will be posted. Um, they're in the survey um, and the mapping tool. So if you have questions about that, anything specific, please feel free to contact us directly and we'll see what we can do to answer your questions. Did you find the traffic count yet, Paul? I did not. Okay. All right, we'll keep going. Um, where would bike parking be since the parking downtown is currently at a premium and often inadequate? Uh, yeah, so it depending on um, which alignment, I think uh, there was a discussion about bike parking being an amenity that would be necessary um, at the end, uh, really in most, I guess all of the alignments, um, they end up near the farmer's market. So again, all of this is subject to a lot of input still and um, coordination and conversation, but um, it's, it's feasible that there would need to be, or likely that there would need to be some additional parking, um, bicycle parking, um, that was the question. So bicycle parking somewhere near the farmer's market um, in, in that city owned area, so. Uh, let's see, are the lines for the options on the map tool exact? Paul, do you wanna? Uh, they are approximate. They show the side of the street, uh, but no, the on the map tool, well, it's a, probably a little fuzzier on the map tool. So the width uh, of the line doesn't constitute the width of the trail or anything no, like that. No. Um, but it does, it does signify which side of the streets is being considered. Um, uh, and really, again, it, it's going to um, depend a lot on, you know, following up with the preferred route. And then, as Paul mentioned, we'll have to have, if the project is funded, we'll start having negotiation right away, com conversations with private property owners and those things that we need to have um, to figure out what, um, where the, where the willing participants are through that process. So. Uh, what is the minimum width being considered at this time? Paul, you said it's the GRG standard um, si uh, side path, right? Yeah, minimum width is 10 feet at the very minimum, except in a constrained situation where it could go down to eight foot, but we're, we're um, assuming 10 foot is the minimum. And typically earlier you mentioned with a five foot buffer from the roadway, where possible, right? Right. Yeah, the side paths have to have that five foot separation from the from the uh, face of curb uh, to the edge of the uh, uh, trail. Right. right. 
does the trailhead move to downtown Kirkwood with this extension? Where will users of the trail park? Um, so there hasn't been discussion of creating a new vehicular trailhead um, for it. So the existing trailhead would still be where it is now. Uh, there's actually one just south of the one at Holmes as well. So multiple trailheads just outside Kirkwood. Um, um, now with that said, there are potential partnering opportunities um, in areas around. Uh, there are publicly accessible parking structures near the station in the station plaza development. So there's other areas um, that that's um, potential that could be potential, but it it's not visioned right now now or hasn't been discussed of, in, of creating a new um, vehicular oriented um, trailhead in downtown. Is that accurate, Paul? Uh, correct. Yeah, we want people to bike to downtown. Uh, so, you know, people to park and then take the trail from downtown. It's more about getting people to downtown <laughs> on a bike and not in a car yeah, is the real goal. Uh, we do want to, we do have to, in order to, for people to do that we have to provide secure and very visible bike parking uh, and we have to do it in a, in a good way uh, and there are some city properties not necessarily right at the at the farmers market uh, but other locations that we could provide that that uh, really high quality bike parking uh, to but not necessarily a trailhead all right next question are you working with st louis county and modot on this grant application to expand connectivity on Big Bend and Kirkwood Road? Uh, the short answer for this project is no. Uh, so we are scoring the project um, to make sure in part of our um, kind of partner uh, focus group meetings with, um, with groups like GRG and TrailNet and City Parks and they, everybody kind of talked about making sure that this option would have or this, this project would have the ability to connect to other um, greenways or other regional systems um, but the scope of this project is specific to this corridor um, running northwest southeast from the current trailhead um, to downtown Kirkwood. Uh, let's see. And uh, so, uh, Jonathan I'm going to pause. I, I'm, I'm yeah. not finding the map I was looking for but we look we had a map that showed streets that had under 3,000 Oh, right. Uh, over 3,000. Right, right, <laughs> I just right. can't put my hands on the map right now. <laughs> okay. Um, so we'll get well, back I, to Liz on that one. Yeah, right. We'll, we'll contact the, the individual who asked that question. So um, let's see. So I think this is follow up for one about how exact the lines were. Um, Paul, for example, option four shows the route going through the homes. Oh, the homes along Clinton versus in the street. Yeah, so any line showing going through homes is not, <laughs> yes, is not accurate. Um, it would um, it would be along the street, right, Paul? Yes, yes. On uh, on Clinton, uh, on Clinton, when it comes off the rail corridor, it would be on the south side of the street, behind the curb line, just uh, five feet behind the curb line, and that would shift to the north side of Clinton. To the west of Luffingwell, uh, behind the curb line, uh, basically widening the sidewalk uh, to Fillmore Park, and then up Fillmore, uh, it would run on the east side of Fillmore, uh, right adjacent to the park, and then cross at the Rapid Flashing Beacon uh, to the west side, uh, and then run along the west side. Right. So again, as the design is refined and plans are, are further refined, it would determine what right away and or easements are needed um, but it would it, yeah it's not um, not going through any residential homes so as great rivers greenway indicated they would participate um, so they they have been participating as a uh, focus group member to help guide uh, and give feedback throughout this process uh, they've been an important part partner in in helping us give or help giving their experience and, and knowledge through this process. Um, it's not anything and we're continuing to have conversations from a, uh, a funding perspective um, or, or other otherwise, but uh, at this point we don't have um, 
don't have any commitment from from outside organizations. Uh, that's that's part of the work we have yet to do. Um, whether it's leading up to the February's grant cycle or future um, future submissions uh, after that. So, what about parking for bikes with limiting limited parking right now? I, I think this is sounds like the same question to me. If the question is about park bike parking for downtown, um, we have understand that extending the trail will have to provide um, at the at the northern terminus here provide additional bicycle parking um, uh, and fit that into to the design right Paul correct yep all right are you working with the new St. Louis County bike walk plan to collaborate and expand connectivity on Big Bend and Kirkwood Road yeah I answered that one already this project is not um, not scoped to connect at this point um, to those projects, um, but we're certainly trying to keep all those future connections uh, open in consideration. So let's see. The railroad tunnel at Clark and Leffingwell provides critical access to school bus yard located there, very heavily traveled morning and afternoon. One way traffic there would create a real hindrance. So that's a, that's a comment I know I think Paul did have a meeting with the, you met with the school bus people, Paul, at one point? Uh, yes, and they, and they talked about uh, the heavy traffic coming out of there. Right. And, you know, if, if it wouldn't be simple stops, you know, right now there's this, it's all, it's the all stop approach and that's not gonna work if there's only one side open. So it would have to be signalized and actuated for that, that, that bus traffic. Uh, as well as for the truck traffic that comes through there. So uh, it's definitely a challenging option and would have to be, have some uh, 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 signalized, it had to be signalized and actuated to make sure that that uh, traffic flowed uh, in a, an acceptable manner. All right. Um, since this will be a key in building a regional bike network. Any thoughts about how this extension will eventually tie riders to the new bike bridge over the Merrimack River at I-44 about to be completed? Um, yeah, I, I think Paul alluded to in one of the alignments, especially alignment number four, um, it goes along Leffingwell and the I-44 right away. Um, so that seemed like it could have potential if a future extension continued to go along I-44. I don't know, if, Paul, that's what you were alluding to. Um, but, yeah, I don't think anything's been done, but right. uh, you know, uh, you know, connections to adjacent greenways are definitely important, and especially the, the Merrimack Greenway. That's 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 uh, you know, we want to try to connect to as many of these adjacent greenways as possible. Uh, again, the challenge is <laughs> the alternatives to make that connection. Right. So, so that's definitely yeah. potential. Right. So we we are keeping that in mind as we go forward. However, we also are staying. Uh, staying focused on this specific um, connection at, at this time. So, um, and I think Paul, I did get uh, one of our um, former council members did send me the map I think you're referring to. And Leffingwell does show up as uh, above 3000 on the map, I think. Um, so we'll, we'll still get that exact number um, on Leffingwell and, and follow up. and. As Paul mentioned, it would be part of whatever engineering analysis is done if the option that's pursued is under that underpass and doing a signalized crossing, it would need additional analysis based on um, peak times and timing of the signal and all that. So it's, um, it would be a very, uh, need to be very heavily studied. So um, are there any future plans, thoughts about plans outside of Kirkwood that would affect these alternatives? If so, do these plans take in any consideration for possible future extension of the trail beyond Kirkwood to the west, north, or east. Um, yeah, so part of the conversations with um, GRG specifically being at the table, they, they did provide information about uh, connections really towards the east. Um, and I would say the west, so the Merrimack Greenway to the west. Um, and I'm blanking on the one that goes through Webster on the east now, but- um, Deer Creek. 
Deer Creek, thank you. So uh, yes, so those would be um, potential future expansions um, further, but uh, obviously our focus um, from a Kirkwood perspective, and we think it, it also should be for regional perspective is to um, get people access um, further into downtown, into downtown Kirkwood. And it's the continuation of the current trajectory of, of, of the Gravelway Greenway. So, uh, all right. Uh, somebody said, I've come late to the Zoom. Is there a map available? I, so we're, we're showing, showing the map now uh, yep. with the uh, four alternatives. And yes, it's, um, it's available um, both in the survey um, and on the mapping tool that are linked on the city's website. If you look at the chat, um, chat box and we have links to the city's making pedestrian and safety a priority there where you can find um, those opportunities. I'm not sure, not sure on the, the end goal is the city from outside the city. I don't, don't know what that question is. So I'm going to skip it. If you want to clarify later, that's fine. Uh, if you want people to bike downtown is more for people. If you want people to bike downtown, is it more for people outside the area or people in Kirkwood? So yeah, it's, it's both. Uh, we're trying to accommodate uh, making safe connections for residents that live in the area, both to hop on and get to downtown if they're in the immediate area or for residents to join the trail downtown and go southeast and get to any other portion um, that it leads to in the opposite direction. Um, so it, it really is um, providing both benefits for um, residents uh, and uh, to bring additional visitors um, to the, um, well, extend the visitors that are now stopping at our city borders um, at homes and getting them to just come a little bit further um into kirkwood so and and just to clarify that so john jonathan uh, so by you know kirkwood is a great place to ride a bike it's a bike friendly community and uh and uh allowing a good trail connection to the uh, from downtown to the rest of the the grants trail is is you know go, going in the other direction not just coming into downtown but coming from downtown from people that live around the downtown itself to get on the grants trail and and go to other parts of the Grants Trail. Uh, so it's it's two, no pun intended, it's a two-way trail. <laughs> and we are we are continuing to pursue the implementation of our bicycle pedestrian plan throughout the city um, so that those connections are made um, wherever you are in the community. Um, uh, you know, uh, made uh, a lot of on-street connections, but they would be made with bicycle routes um, implemented as we have the, the ability to do so. so. Any consideration to extending the trail to the park? Uh, so I assume Kirkwood Park, there is a, there, one of these does go through Fillmore Park, but I assume the park is referencing Kirkwood Park. Um, and so the, with this scope of the project and the, um, the focus, it, was, it has been um, always determined or, or the vision, the goal to connect to downtown. Uh, as I just mentioned before this question, we have, um, a citywide bicycle network that we're continuing to improve. And so there would be, um, uh, I believe Argonne is a bicycle route that would go west to the park um, and could have future improvements to make that connection, but it's um, not part of this, the scope of this project currently. Uh, are you considering a link to Meacham Park from this trail? Uh, so again, similar to the Kirkwood Park connection question, um, the focus of this project um, is, does not include linking other areas of the town. However, we do have parallel efforts. Uh, we did submit for a federal grant, a raise grant um, uh, this past year to uh, connect Southeast Kirkwood, including Meacham Park to downtown. Um, so we're pursuing parallel projects to try to make um, pedestrian, um, if not pedestrian bicycle connections, uh, um, through multiple areas of the town uh, throughout, throughout Kirkwood. I live on Scott Avenue. Is this a proposed route? And you just went away from the maps, Paul. But the, so I think Scott Avenue 
I don't think it is on any of the options, Paul, right? That came through. Uh, just the section of Scott between Fillmore oh, and right. Leffingwell. Right. Um, That's the only right. portion of the Scott. So uh, on, and it's on, on the south side adjacent to the railroad. Right. So on alignment two there, uh, right, the blue route, got it. Yeah, it would be along the railroad on the south side of, of Scott for that portion that runs directly adjacent to, to the railroad. Um, the last question right now in the queue is, does the Kirkwood Road Big Bend project compete in priority with the same route of STP funds? Does the Kirkwood Road Big Bend project? So there, I don't know specifically what project that's referencing. Um, MoDOT has a project already funded and planned for um, Kirkwood Road, Lindbergh, south of Big Bend. So that is already funded and being um, implemented by MoDOT. Uh, I, the project I mentioned that we applied for a raise grant to do a planning grant to plan a better connection from downtown to southeast Kirkwood, um, better, better pedestrian connection. Uh, those are also separate federal program funds. Uh, Paul, are you aware of any other project that I've no, they, uh, there is a project on Big Bend at I-44 right. um, that's, that's already funded and it's going to go to construction soon. So, uh, but that has nothing to do with this project or the funding that we're going to go after. Although, you know, there are, I mean, uh, if another entity like the county submits for funding on Big Bend, this project would compete against that theoretically as right. an SDP project. So, but I don't know if they're submitting a project or not. Right, right. All right, what is the city's long-term plans for the trail? Are there any vision goals? Um, so I, hopefully you joined late, but um, we'll be posting the presentation uh, um, here later this week. And uh, yes, there were substantial goals, uh, a vision and goals set for this project. Um, the overall goal of the project is to make a uh, I'm not going to hit all the terms. Well, there you go. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> so <laughs> this, is, this is the vision that was established for the project. Um, so um, I won't read it out loud, but it's there. Um, and uh, that is what has been guiding this whole process. So uh, last question I see, they're still kind of trickling in, but uh, did the city get their raise grant, planning grant funded? So we have not been notified about that at this point. Um, um, and I, I haven't checked in the past couple of days, um, but as far as we know, uh, we haven't been notified one way or the other about the, the separate planning grant. So, and yeah, Paul just flipped in now the goals. So the vision statement that's been guiding it and then the goals. Um, and we did have these put out to the public. We got feedback from a focus group of uh, other regional partners and then had this as part of the survey for the general public to weigh in on with the over um, over 600 responses that we got. Um, and it, people, I think it was 87% or something like that to agree with the direction of the project with the goals and vision established, so. All right. Yeah, and of course I can't put my hand on that map I was talking about, I still can't. So I apologize. <laughs> That's all right. I know I made one. Um, okay. All right. Well, if you have the last slide, Paul, make it, sorry, make it jump back and forth. It'll have, um, my contact information on it. And then, um, if you had been contacted as a property owner in the subject area study area previously, you should have received a follow-up email from us recently that had information about how to contact, um, uh, to set up, um, office hours or, uh, with Paul. And I think, um, while well, they are walking, is that right? Yes. Walking yes. hours as well. So, uh, um, if if anybody uh, didn't get that information and uh, would like to be put in contact with Paul, you can uh, feel free to contact me, and I'll I'll forward it along. Um, and yeah, so please participate in the online mapping tool until November thirtieth, and the survey questionnaire online. Um, Appreciate it, Paul or Gabby. Any anything else before 
and close up. I'll put my email in the chat uh, just in case any property owners didn't get an email or are missing it. So they can email me directly and I'll get you guys scheduled and all worked out. Great. So Gabby is coordinating those, those office hour meetings um, for us as well. So thank you, Gabby. Um, all right. Well, we appreciate everybody's attendance, uh, hanging in there for those of you that have so far and um, look forward to the feedback to come. Have a good evening. Yeah, thanks, everybody.